Um, so we've got the, the beauty about this, and obviously we can spend hours talking about you know, sequencing and things. So we've got, we've got a, a radiopharmaceutical, we've got traditional cytotoxic chemotherapy. Uh, we also know that we have some other agents out there with, with also different mechanisms of action. So let's talk a little bit about some of the newer hormonal agents. So let's, uh, let's talk about the one that you know, really has approval both in the pre-chemotherapeutic space and the post-chemotherapeutic space, which is abiraterone. I mean, I think that uh, this is a very exciting time for patients that we have uh, both abiraterone and enzalutamide as oral agents. I mean, 20 years ago when I saw these patients with metastatic disease, uh, you really only had options, you know, very end-stage options for the patient. And often when I saw those patients, you're seeing them very much in, the, in a palliative care light. With things like um, abiraterone and enzalutamide, the oral agents that are extremely well tolerated in the majority of patients. Um, I've certainly had no difficulties managing these patients um, in the urology setting. Obviously with the abiraterone, uh, it requires uh, prednisone uh, therapy, which again, if properly managed and the patients understand that this is more of a replacement dose, it's not a high dose of prednisone like many patients are used to taking for illnesses like COPD. Um, I think we also have to remember, although these uh, agents are oral and they are well tolerated. Again, it's all about selecting the right medication for the right patient and we mustn't become blasé. It's important that we monitor these patients appropriately, see them regularly and do the appropriate blood work to make sure that they are, they are safe to stay on these medications. Mike? Um, I think, uh, you know, again, to have this setting now where, you know, just a few years ago, you didn't have very many just in all of oncology, you know, you know, just one single agent that would give survivals greater than four months. And I think it's important for the audience to really understand that, you know, now we have six of them in all of oncology, just single agents, and three of those are in this metastatic castrate-resistant prostate cancer that are greater than four months. That just is something that's hard for people to understand, switching from treating localized disease over into this more advanced disease. Um, with abiraterone, it's, it's shown a significant response. It had a great response time post-chemotherapy, and now in the pre-chemo space, though it had to be closed early because uh, the data was so good and beneficial for the patient, we didn't really see an overall survival benefit in pre-chemo because of the closing. Um, we did see a significant improvement in the progression-free survival aspect, and, and I think that's a very important armamentarium. Most of these patients do very well. I think most urologists have a little bit of heartburn about giving prednisone. Um, for some reason, that a steroid uh, to be given twice a day is, is, some, uh, is, is just something that's a little bit, little bit scary, but as you kind of go on with it, and you understand it's just setting up a protocol within your practice to have liver function tests, because this is specifically run through the liver, as well as just over, uh, overlying their whole fluid status. I've had one patient that had to be stopped because of heart failure issues that were associated with this medicine. Um, those, as long as you're just monitoring those basic things, um, it can be an excellent, excellent drug. You know, Mike's mentioned about the clinical issues and the safety issues with these medications. I think many urologists have fears over the reimbursement issues, but actually once you get the right setup uh, with the insurance companies, uh, there's been a huge improvement in coverage for these medications and access to get these medications for patients who are progressing onto the right treatment as quickly as possible. And I think we've got over a lot of those hurdles. Yeah, I think the companies, it should be, you know, definitely the companies have been very progressive in that aspect. They've made it simple to where you can train, they'll actually come in and train your staff in some cases to call. There's a single number to call and get these patients pre-authorized for these medications, which are quite expensive. There's no doubt as compared to what we're used to giving in terms of even LHRH agonists, these are, these are quite remarkably more expensive. Um, but it has been, it made it much more simple and streamlined just in the last two to three years. You know, there was a mention earlier about having your office staff or your nurses trained to be in part of the team. That's really essential here. We have a designated nurse who handles these oral agents. She knows the program, she knows who to call, and it takes the load off of me. Every now and then I need to jot a 
quick letter or send a note or something like that. But having somebody in your office who kind of can serve as a conduit for these really is important. And it's important as well that this is seamless because if the patient knows they're progressing on a treatment and you're telling them this is the new treatment, this is going to get your disease back into control, the patient doesn't want to wait weeks and weeks and weeks waiting for approval. They want to be on the drug now.